Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at chromatography. We're going to talk about what chromatography actually is, different types of chromatography, including thin layer chromatography, column chromatography, and gas liquid chromatography, and how chromatography can be used to help separate mixtures and identify compounds. Before we talk in detail about chromatography, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Mixtures are made up of two or more different substances that aren't chemically joined together. Polar substances contain dipoles, regions of partial negative and partial positive charge. They occur due to differences in electronegativities between bonded atoms. Water is a common example of a polar substance. Nonpolar substances don't contain regions of partial negative or partial positive charge. Hydrocarbons in organic chemistry are common examples of nonpolar substances. Polar substances tend to mix well with other polar substances, and nonpolar substances tend to mix well with other nonpolar substances. Polar and nonpolar substances, however, don't usually mix well with each other. Recap done? Let's go! Chromatography is a technique that can be used to separate uniform mixtures and can also be used to help identify substances. There are several different types of chromatography, and the use of each depends on the type of mixture and substances being studied. All, however, work on the same idea of a stationary and mobile phase, and the length of time each substance spends in either one of these phases during a chromatography process. The stationary phase refers to the time spent by a substance when it isn't moving during chromatography, and the mobile phase refers to the time spent by a substance whilst it is moving, usually in a solvent. Different substances in a mixture spend different amounts of time in each phase, meaning if they all start the chromatography process at the same time, they will finish at different times. This allows a mixture to be separated based on how much time each substance spends in each phase. Sometimes, substances can be further analysed as they get separated in chromatography, and substances can even be identified based on the length of time they spend in each phase. How much time a substance spends in one phase compared to the other is referred to as its affinity, and this is based on specific properties of the substance, such as its polarity. The affinity of a substance for either phase can be affected by the solvents used for the mobile phase or the materials used for the stationary phase. If a substance is polar, for example, then it will spend more time in a polar solvent, the mobile phase, compared to the stationary phase during chromatography, whereas a nonpolar substance would spend more time in the stationary phase as it would have a lower affinity to a polar solvent. Slight differences in polarity affect the amount of time spent in each phase, meaning only small differences between molecules can allow them to be separated using chromatography. The most common example of chromatography is paper chromatography, where the stationary phase is paper and a substance is dissolved in a solvent, which acts as the mobile phase. The paper is placed vertically into a small volume of the mobile phase, and as the solvent moves up the paper, the dissolved substances in it will absorb onto the paper before dissolving from the paper and redissolving in the solvent, re-entering the mobile phase and travelling up the paper. They will then temporarily absorb back onto the stationary phase again and repeat the process upwards. The less time the substance spends in the stationary phase, the faster it will move up the paper. A similar technique is called thin layer chromatography, or TLC. This technique works in the same way as paper chromatography, however it uses a plate that is coated in silica rather than paper. Often the plate is made of aluminium to give a bit of strength. The use of a stronger plate and of a silica coating allows more corrosive and reactive substances to be used that would otherwise easily damage paper. Just like with paper chromatography, substances travel up the plate in a solvent. The more soluble a substance is in a given solvent, the faster it will move up the plate. 
Comparisons between the distance travelled by the solvent and the distance travelled by a sample in the same amount of time enable substances to be easily identified. RF values are used to describe these distances and the RF value of a substance is calculated by taking the distance travelled by the substance and dividing it by the distance travelled by the solvent, also referred to as the solvent front. Both of these distances have to be travelled in the same amount of time. Values will always be between 0 and 1, and the greater an RF value, the greater the affinity the substance has for the mobile phase. Different solvents can be used depending on the substances being studied. For example, a highly polar substance would travel quickly up a plate if a polar solvent such as ethanol was used, and as a result, the substance would have a high RF value. However, if a less polar or even non-polar solvent such as hexane was used, the substance would barely move up the plate and have a very low RF value as a result. For many organic molecules, locating agents or dyes such as ninhydrin have to be used to enable the substance's positions on a TLC plate to be identified. UV light can also be used as many organic molecules absorb UV light. As useful as thin layer chromatography is, it can't easily be used to isolate a particular compound from a mixture. For this, column chromatography can be used. In column chromatography, there is again a stationary and mobile phase. The stationary phase this time, however, is placed inside a vertical column, often in the form of small solid beads. The beads may be made of silica, like the surface of a plate in thin layer chromatography, or may be plastic or glass beads coated in a sticky gel that acts as the stationary phase. The mixture to be separated is dissolved in a given solvent and placed into the top of the column. As the mixture runs down through the column in the solvent, substances in the mixture will spend different amounts of time in the stationary phase and mobile phase, meaning they will leave the column at different times. Here, the distance travelled isn't measured, instead it is the time taken for the substances to move through the column. This is called retention time. Again, the solvent used has a big impact on the length of time each substance in the mixture may spend in the stationary or mobile phase. A more precise and advanced type of chromatography is gas-liquid or gas chromatography. It can look quite confusing at first, however it really just follows the same idea as column chromatography. In gas-liquid chromatography, the mobile phase is an inert carrier gas, often something like helium or argon, that won't react to the samples being studied. And the stationary phase is a thick liquid coated on small beads. The carrier gas is put under pressure to make sure it is forced through a column, and an oven is used to ensure all substances in the sample remain as vapour. Just like with thin layer chromatography and column chromatography, a mixture can be separated and molecules in the mixture analysed based on the length of time they spent in the mobile phase compared to the stationary phase. Samples with a low affinity for the stationary phase will stay mostly in the mobile phase and move through the column quickly. Samples with a high affinity for the stationary phase will take longer to move through the column as they will spend less time in the mobile phase compared to the stationary phase. A signal is produced by a detector each time a compound comes out of the column and the time is recorded for when the signal was detected. All signals produced by a sample are printed onto a graph called a chromatogram. The sizes of the peaks also give information about the relative amounts of each substance in the mixture. A peak twice the size of another peak means the sample contained twice as much of that substance compared to the other. The process is very precise and can be used to analyse very small quantities. It is, however, complicated to set up and all samples must be injected into the mobile phase the inert carrier gas, as a vapour before they enter the column. As we mentioned, the inert gas is under pressure, forcing it through the column. 
To ensure the sample stays vaporized, the column is coiled inside an oven to keep the sample boiling. This ensures it's the affinity for each phase, and not simply the physical state of the substances, that determine how long it will take them to move through the column. By changing the length of the column, the density of solid in the column, and the pressure of the carrier gas, the retention time of a sample can be altered. Sometimes a mass spectrometer is connected to the output of a gas-liquid chromatography setup. And this means each substance in a mixture can be sent through the mass spectrometer to find out their relative molecular mass. This is referred to as gas chromatography mass spectrometry, or GCMS. So, to summarize, chromatography is a technique used to separate mixtures and can also be used to help identify substances. There are different types of chromatography and all center around the same idea a stationary and mobile phase, and the length of time a substance spends in one phase compared to the other. The stationary phase refers to the time spent by a substance when it isn't moving during chromatography, and the mobile phase refers to the time spent by a substance whilst it is moving, usually in a solvent. Different substances spend different amounts of time in each phase, meaning if they all start a chromatography process at the same time, they will leave or finish at different times, and this enables a mixture to be separated. Sometimes the substances can be analysed individually after they've been separated. The time spent in the mobile or stationary phase will be based on the properties of the substances present, for example their polarity. Thin layer chromatography uses a solid silica based surface as a stationary phase and a liquid solvent as the mobile phase. Substances dissolved in the solvent move up the plate. If they absorb onto the surface of the silica however, they temporarily stop moving upwards and are in the stationary phase, before they then dissorb and redissolve in the solvent, continuing to move upwards. The length of time it takes for substances to travel up the plate is based on the length of time it spends in the stationary phase compared to the mobile phase. RF values are calculated by dividing the distance travelled by a substance up the plate and the distance travelled by the solvent in the same length of time. RF values are always between 0 and 1 and can be different for different substances. In column chromatography, a mixture dissolved in a solvent is forced through a column of tightly packed beads that are sometimes coated in a gel that acts as a stationary phase. Depending on the affinity of a substance for the stationary phase compared to the mobile phase, different substances in a mixture will take a different length of time to pass through the column. In this case, it is time that is measured rather than distance, and retention times are recorded for each substance as they leave the bottom of the column. Gas liquid chromatography uses an inert carrier gas rather than a liquid solvent, and a densely packed column with a stationary phase inside. The inert carrier gas is under pressure and the sample vaporized, meaning once both are mixed and injected into the column, the pressure of the gases forces them through the column, meaning the carrier gas is acting as the mobile phase, keeping the substances in the sample moving. To ensure the sample stays vaporized, the column is coiled inside an oven to keep the sample boiling. This ensures it's the affinity for each phase and not simply the physical state of the sample that determines how long it will take the sample to move through the column. By changing the length of the column coiled in the oven, the density of the solid in the column or the pressure of the carrier gas, the retention time of a sample can be altered. Sometimes a mass spectrometer is connected to the output of a gas liquid chromatography setup and this means each substance in a mixture can be sent through the mass spectrometer to find out their relative molecular mass. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.